And I have to say, I have been looking forward to this uh, discussion for a couple of months now since I met Jan Golden and learned about her organization and had the opportunity to chat with her briefly about her thoughts on uh, what it means to grow old and how we can better respect um, ourselves and our loved ones. Um, and so I am real excited about today's discussion. And I know uh, many of you are too, because I've received a few emails this morning, which I was going to share some of that, that info. But um, without further ado, let's meet uh, Jan and kick off this discussion on ageism with a focus on you know, these uh, wacky birthday cards that we've been given out for years that are disparaging growing older. Uh, but uh, Jan, I know we're going to dive into this topic, but um, uh, let's get to know you first. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey to create this innovative company. Well, first of all, thank you so much for your interest in this topic. It's one I am super passionate about, and I am so happy to be here today and, and speaking about this. Um, a little bit about me. I live in the Denver, Colorado area, and I have a tech background. I've been in the tech field my entire career. Most recently, I've been in web development. About 10 years ago, I got the entrepreneurial bug and decided that I wanted to start blogging about iPhone tips and tricks. This is something, I don't know if a lot of people know this about me, but it's what led me to understanding more about ageism. In my journey with iPhone training, I was found myself at a conference in Denver back in 2015. It was called the Boom Conference. And the keynote speaker was Ashton Applewhite, who was launching her book, Called this chair rocks. Now, if any of you are aware of ageism, you've probably heard of Ashton. She's got a very famous TED talk, and she's got um, kind of like a really great perspective and overview insight on ageism. So once I heard her speak, like a lot of other people, I started to see ageism everywhere, and especially in the field of tech and tech training, where ageism we're, as far as I'm concerned, we're unfairly pegged as not being tech savvy, which impacts our credibility in the workplace. When I was um, doing iPhone training, I trained people, mostly older adults, but nobody knew some of the features of their iPhone. Nobody was backing up their phone. Anyway, the tech issues happened across the board. So I got more involved with understanding more about workplace age discrimination, which led me to changing the narrative, which is another pro-aging um, activist group. They're based right here in Denver. Many of you probably have heard of Janine Vandenberg, who is nationally known with the work that she's doing on policy, all kinds of campaigns around bringing awareness to ageism. So I feel like I had these really great early influences and the information and messages just totally resonated with me. But fast forward to 2020 during COVID, Changing the Narrative sponsored a anti-ageist birthday card contest. And I, since I had a graphic design background, I, I became interested in just kind of seeing what was out there. And I tell you what, I was astounded at the number of ageist cards that I saw. Um, I don't know if any of you have, especially if you tried to search for like clever or funny birthday card, the number of cards that were loudly declaring that you are now old, that, you know, other ones that were in clever ways trying to minimize your age by saying, oh, you're 50, you're like two 25 year olds or giving you the scrabble age for your, um, your age. Anyway, those types of cards, but the worst of the worst were those caricatures of older people, those cartoon-like drawings that exaggerated features, right? They had sagging body parts and just these sentiments about how awful it is to be old. And those cars were being made by some of the largest producers by Hallmark, American Greetings, Leaning Tree. And they're still being produced today. And they're still on the shelves today. So that really fired me up. I decided to, um, with changing the narrative, I learned how to reframe and flip the script 
on your thinking. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with reframing as a technique, but I started by taking some ages phrases and just flipping the script. So for example, here's some of my early cards. So this one says, you look great. So you look great for your age is one of the um, most ageist semi compliments, backhanded compliments that you can get. This one flips the strip script and says, you look great all the time, not just for your age. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. And here's another one that was one of my early designs. Instead of damn, you're old, which that's the card that the sentiment that really grinds me. I have my card says, damn, you're hot, but I actually cross out the old to the hot. So people understand that instead of this being declaring you're old, I'm telling you you're hot. And then this one is kind of a surprise bestseller. But as I was um, kind of brainstorming, I came across with the phrase old fart. And I came up with flipping the script and calling it a mature barking spider instead of an old fart. Uh, anyway, oh my these God. early cards. <laughs> I love so it. Early on, yeah, I set up a Etsy shop during COVID and the response was great. So evidently people were wanting an alternative to ages birthday cards. And since then, and Steve and I, we talked about this a little bit, but I, one of my big focuses is changing the industry. So I decided that I wanted to understand more about the greeting card industry, which is a huge industry. It's in the billions of dollars with a B every year, the number of greeting cards sold. So I knew that I couldn't just, the Etsy store wasn't enough for me. I wanted to learn more about the industry. So this past year, I spent time getting involved in the greeting card association, um, learning how to get my products on the shelves of stores and it's working. I've got my cards on the on the shelves of um, about 30 retailers um, and I've been involved in the greeting card industry. I've been exhibiting at trade shows, which has gone really well. People see cards like this one. Every year you get hotter and not just in flashes. That's one of my newest designs. I think uh, this is another one that's um, uh, you're at that age where you realize they were all wrong about this age. Oh, I love that. In fact, <laughs> I, I, you know, I realized that this morning I went on your website and I bought a bunch of these because it's sort of like, wait a second, I got to practice what I preach here. I believe yeah. in this, but I, I got to make sure I've got these on hand and then I'm doing my part in giving these out. And that was, I think, one of my favorite ones. Um, yeah. That I and you saw. brought up a really great point because the you can still go into a drugstore you know walgreens a grocery store and find ages cards in fact i was just in whole foods and i'm writing to the whole foods um card buyer because they had a lot of ages cards at whole foods and it's because they're they're buying from these large organizations right and and they're still i call them the the quick grab and go type of a card. But if you want to make a difference and find an alternative, you've got to stock up on these cards. So you're not just running into the grocery store and grabbing you know, the top seller by the largest of the large um, greeting card organizations right now. So anyway, that's where I'm at today. I've got this um, stationary business that I'm having a ball with and I've never run out of material. There's so much um, age positive, messaging happening in the news there's more more and more celebrities and just more and more awareness around the harmful effects of ageism yeah i'm trying to find the one that i really there was one they're all super clever but there's one that you you talk about uh you're now the age um Oh God, it, 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 it was just really clever. The and first one, it's a, it's a, you're at that age where you realize they were all wrong about this age. So good. Yeah. 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 No, where, where is that? It's right there. You're on it right there in the middle. Oh, this one. Yeah. This yeah. is great folks. It says you're at the age when you realize they were all wrong about this age. And I, you know, th I will tell you, like I shared this with somebody the other day, and I said, and and it created a discussion. It was mm -hmm. like I was like, because this um, this woman was turning fifty, and I was like, oh, you know, 
um, I got this discussion on Friday. Let me show you this. And I showed her this card and I said, like, I want you to think about when you were 20, what you thought about somebody your age. Yeah. And we, ch we chatted for a bit. It was a great positive dialogue, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, the, um, okay. Uh, well, a couple of things. I see we got some really awesome age advocates in the audience. Uh, I want to, I want to give a shout out to, uh, let's see, Meg uh, Laporte, who's in the audience, and she has a, um, an organization that she recently started called Art Against Ageism, and they're doing some creative stuff in this space. Uh, I also wanted to make sure that people know about Ashton Applewhite and this this resource. It's a uh, ageism clearinghouse called Old School Anti Ageism Clearinghouse. Um, we've got your website there, and then the changing the narrative. And you know, this is uh, and and J Jan, I know you're a big supporter of this program because it helped you launch. But they have an annual program on anti ageism birthday cards and if you click on the website you can see the um the i don't want to call them the winners but the featured cards from um 2023 and they're all really cool and you can buy them you, you know and uh this is um i i think this might seem little to people like a little one birthday card giving it to one person but i really think that this billion dollar industry of of greeting cards just accidentally stumbled into hey it's cool to make jokes about people's age and this has been feed, we've been feeding this beast for decades and yeah. it's and and that's one of the reasons why there's this ageist culture out there and and we can turn this around i I'm confident we can. And um, and with that, I shared this email from Jenna, who I see is on the um is is on our discussion here today. Je and Jenna, thank you for um for sharing this. But I'm gonna share to to kick off our discussion because that's what we want it to be today, is a discussion. We want you all to kind of jump in here with your thoughts and and ideas, but um, Jenna posed a, uh, a, she's from Capitol Hill Village in Washington, D.C., and, and she posed a few points in her email. I didn't copy the whole email, but she says, since ages birthday cards are intended to be poking fun and getting a laugh out of the recipient, what can we say or do to gently persuade people not to send them? And I'm, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to let you reflect on that, Jan, and yeah. share your thoughts on that, and then we can deal with some of the other points? Yeah, that's a great, um, a great question. And for me personally, people don't send me ages cards. And part of the reason is because they know how I feel about getting older, right? So I think one of the things that you can do, first of all, is start talking about how you feel about getting older and make it be known, you know, instead of when your birthday's approaching, either saying, oh, I'm dreading it, or oh, I don't want to celebrate another birthday, start talking about the upsides of aging. And then also, if you do find yourself in a situation where you're at a party and you've received a card, or there's a card floating around, you know how you pass them around at a party and one of them is ageist, you can just ask people like, well, how do you feel about getting older? And a lot of times, you know, it's most people feel pretty good about getting older, but there's going to be a few people, probably the person who bought the card <laughs> that is, is feeling like uncomfortable about it, or, you know, they're, they're not, they're kind of have mixed emotions about getting older. And I think that just opens up a conversation. So if somebody says, oh, I just dread it, you know, I'm falling apart. And you can, you can gently say, wow, I don't feel that way. You know, I feel like I have tons of opportunity. It's the best time of my life and I'm looking forward to what the future holds. So I think that's the, the biggest thing is just having a conversation. Another real quick thing that um, really motivates me is Dr. Becca Levy's research from Yale University and her book, Breaking the Age Code. 
I'm sure some of you are aware of her research, but it's what really fuels my business. And that is, you can also let people know that your mindset about aging and how you feel about getting older impacts your longevity. And not by a little bit, by up to seven and a half years. So people, her studies have proven that people who have a positive outlook about getting older actually live a longer, healthier life. And so I feel like there's no better testimony than that one right there saying, you know, basically you're, you're impacting your lifespan by, you know, using age as an excuse. I, I love it. And uh, I, I'm, I'm getting really good at pulling up these websites when people say things, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, um, the, so I'm copying all the links to these books that Jan and, and experts that Jan, or, or I should say thought leaders that Jan uh, is mentioning. And um, let me, let me go back to uh, Jenna's email because she had a couple of other good points that I wanted to address. And then we'll start uh, going through our chat and Q and A, um, and she says it's a little touchy if you object to the cards. A lot of times, people say lighten up. Getting older isn't rainbows and unicorns. You got to <laughs> laugh rather than cry, right? Um, right? And so, you you know, we had a I I, I in anticipation of this discussion, I posted um, what turned into a really pretty cool conversation on LinkedIn. And I, I noticed that a lot of people say this is, is that if you try to bring this up is, is that the response is lighten up, yeah. man, what are you talking mm -hmm. about? It's just yeah. a joke, you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a common, um, a common theme and a common pushback. And what I like to talk about when somebody mentioned that to me is so when you're giving a birthday card that says you know damn you're old or whatever you're you're thinking first of all that it's you're having a two-way conversation with me and my friend Steve who's my you know college roommate or my high school buddy or whatever and it's like just this little jabbing and poking fun but it's really more than that that card is on the shelf in <laughs> And everybody is seeing it, right? And people have to sort through all the cards that talk about how awful it is to be old in order to select the one that they want to buy. But more importantly is that your hiring manager is seeing that card. <laughs> your healthcare professional is seeing that card. And if you're not aware, ageism in healthcare is a really big issue as far as the biases around how older adults um, are treated as they get older in the healthcare system. And also, I think one of the roots of the problem is that these marketing executives and advertisers that are out and about in the world buying birthday cards for their parents and their friends too, are seeing that these, these options are acceptable. So it's not just a two-way conversation and an inside joke between you and your bestie. It's, it's a little mini statement out there in the world that says getting old sucks. And I, I for one, don't believe that. So that's why I'm standing up against that. So, and I, I don't know if any of us believe that. I don't even think the people that are saying that getting old sucks believe believe that. I think it's just it, we've created this expectation that you know it, it it's bizarre. It really is. Um, I, I I I I see we're getting some really good comments there, and um, I. Before I forget, because I like sharing the story of my of my personal experience, where I kind of um, it's a little bit different. But my buddy was went to the Coast Guard Academy, and so he retired from the Coast Guard in his early forties. And I got invited to the uh, the um, the retirement event for him. So I went to my local greeting card store. And I started looking for retirement uh, cards and they were horrible, absolutely horrible. I mean, it was sort of like, you know, one foot in the grave, a guy in a rocking chair and this, that and the other. And, and you know, granted, my, my friend was a little bit more unique than your typical retiree because he was retiring from the, uh, the military. And so I got the idea instead, I'm gonna get him a graduation card. And so I, um, 
I got him a graduation card and I got a, a graduation balloon and I went there and the, um, the interesting thing, I know that we were celebrating my friend's retirement, but, but the idea of making this a graduation and not a retirement party, that was such a positive topic of conversation at the party. It really helped me see how you can reframe this narrative. And, yeah. um, and it's a little trick. If you ever talk to somebody who really loved their job and they're retiring, a lot of times they're not happy about it because yeah. that job gives them purpose. And if you reframe that and you say, it's, you're not retiring, you're graduating. Yeah. And anytime I've done that, they, it gets a smile on their face and it's sort of like, yeah, you're right. You know? So, um, yeah, I love that story, Steve. And I think that the, the under, underlying lesson there is that, you know, when you see these options presented to you in our culture around, you know, oh, you go to Amazon or you go to your party store and you see all the doom and gloom around something like retirement, it's, it takes you just a minute to think of how to put a spin on that. But like you mentioned, when you do, it's like super powerful. So that's a great one. Great. Okay. I'm going to go back to Jenna's email and uh, the last bullet, and then I promise we'll get to all the comments that are in there. But I, this is a bullet that I don't want to take lightly. And yeah. she says, but what else can be done on a grassroots level? Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Jan? Yeah, there's, there's definitely some things that can be done. Um, one of the things in, in the LinkedIn discussion that you had around this topic, Steve, I think there was a conversation about um, the the blog post that Jeanette Liardi wrote about what she did when she turned 70 and she received an, an ages card. Um, she actually wrote to the CEO of the greeting card company. She looked on the back of the card and found out the company um, that was uh, had produced the card and she blacked out the name of the recipient to make it not as personal and basically said, look at this card that you're producing and what this, you know, how I felt about it and just took a moment to educate the CEO of the company about ageism. So in her blog post, she basically said, I feel her, her feeling is to go to the top of the chain and write to them. Well, her card got read <laughs> and passed along and she did get a response. And not only did she get a response, but she, um, the person who responded said that she passed it along to the marketing department and they worked on creating some cards that were a little less ageist. And she goes on in the in her blog post to mention that the card that they produced, the next year she got a card that was a more age positive and it was produced by this um, particular company. So I thought that was a pretty cool story. That might not be the thing that most people are comfortable doing. Um, it's definitely effective. One of the things I like to do is if you're in a store, especially if it's a gift shop or a boutique, well, it's really if it's anywhere, just when you see an ages card, there's a, there's a few, I, I live in a, I have a second home and a resort community in Colorado. And I was at this really lovely florist and we were shopping, my friend and I, and there was this greeting card on the shelf that said, um, something about your your boob falling into your coffee and thinking you had a hot flash or something it was just awful right and so honestly the woman with me was a breast cancer survivor and so it was also offensive on the breast reference but i went up to the in this case it was the person just working at the register in these smaller shops the owner the person buying the card is not that far away and i just said this type of card is not okay, you know, and we both ended up walking out of the shop. So I think you can talk to the store owner about what these cards represent. And if we don't, then I think they, they feel like it's okay that, you know, they're selling this type of card. So I think if you let a store owner know, you just lost a sale because the fact that you're carrying a type of card with this type of message made me not want to support this particular business. Um, a couple of other people mentioned, I think Jenna mentioned it as well. One of the things you can do is just flip the card over on the rack too, and just, you know, uh, you know, kind of, but I think the other thing you can do is, is buy the age positive ones and, and not buy um, the ages cards, but 
I think that's the thing specifically around birthday cards that that you can do. I, I, I love it. All right. Uh, well, thank you, Jenna, for that email this morning and kicking things off. Let me uh, glance through here and uh, and here. Oh, uh, Jenna is getting a gold star today. But um, one of the things that um, she uh, she talks about that Jenna talks about in her comment is Ashton Applewhite did a um, what has become a very famous uh, TED talk, and I want to make sure to uh, um, put that in the chat because if you haven't seen it, it's very inspirational, and it it it's called Let's End Ageism, and it's a um, it's um, I have I've never talked to anybody that didn't listen to it that wasn't sort of inspired and their eyes were open to the uh, the challenge here uh, that we're faced with here. Okay, um, where are we at? Okay, uh, Steve, love the, okay. Uh, Sue says, I'm recently retired, a baby boomer, and now a lot of my friends are starting to retire as well. And it's been hard to find these positive cards. I look forward to ordering some of the retirement cards. Thank you for raising my awareness. That that's great, and yeah. and just you know you know doing a discussion like this and making an impact on one person. It's it really that that blog post that uh, we just talked about. It's the power of one, and yeah. um, exactly. the. Um, uh, I do want to mention one thing here too that um, one of the things I'm working on and you can work on as well is um, I'm working on most people that are designing these cards aren't aware of ageism. So the other thing you need to do is just step back and and give people the benefit of the doubt. And once you make people aware, especially the the fact that it impacts longevity and that you're sending a greeting card, which is a personal exchange between one person to another. And why in the world would you make somebody feel lousy when you're doing that personal exchange? And one of the things I'm doing with my peers in that changing the narrative, most recent contest, those designers are, many of them are people in the greeting card association that have been made aware of ageism by my work and other people's work. So I think just the more that we can talk about ageism, and just the more we can give people alternatives, but people really want to feel good about getting older, and it really makes a difference. I think um, that's another thing that we can just do is, is continue to talk about it. And, and it, birthday cards in particular, it's like, why would anybody want to be mean to somebody on their birthday? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the uh, Actually, the, the, the woman that runs Changing the Narrative, she did a keynote uh, speech for the um, greeting card industry, yeah. which I'll, I'll make sure to find that because That's I listened. Janine. To, yeah. That's yeah, Janine, yeah, Janine. I that. I listened to yeah. that the other day, and I loved how um, she used like smiley faces at the beginning of her presentation. She had a smile, a frown, and a you know. And she said, you know, how do you feel on your birthday? And yeah. we all we feel the smiley face. Doesn't matter yeah. who you are. And and then to think that that somebody's going to give you a um a card that's going to put a frown on your face uh bizarre yeah. um i i did have an opportunity to speak um to do a pitch for my cards at the greeting card association's event of the year last year the, it's coming up in april again this year about ageism in greeting cards as well and so i think continuing to having these discussions is great and i think Again, like I said, most people are not aware and they're appreciative of the conversation and the discussion. And so, again, we just need to continue to bring awareness to this instead of ignoring it. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, let's see. Uh, Glenna says one of my favorite books on aging is um, uh, on aging, especially like her discussion of priming how negative it is. And it's called Proving yourself younger and healthier. And uh, the, the link is in there. Okay. And then, um, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Somebody's talking about maybe analyze jokes in general about race, women, or older people. This is, you know, one of the things that I say when people say lighten up about ageist ideas, I think that for the most part, a lot of ageism is really accidental. 
Okay, so let's say that you're working in a uh, in a diner or a restaurant, and your colleague who trained you baby talks to old people. Uh, okay, who come in? Um, well, I guess that's what we're supposed to do, you know. So I'm going to do that, but never really putting the empathy glasses on and realizing it's sort of like, I never want somebody to talk to me like a baby ever. Okay. Right. Unless I'm a baby. Um, right. Okay. So, um, but, but I think one way when we talk about having conversations about reframing and people say lighten up, it's sort of like, yeah, you know, I bet back in the fifties, they said lighten up when a woman complained about the way she was treated in the boardroom. And right. I bet it, I bet back then too, that an African-American person that complained about the way people were talking to yeah. them disparagingly, that people said lighten up too. Um, yeah. and we need to sort of think about that for, for aging. So thank you for, for, for that comment. Mm -hmm. um, um, and uh, let's see, Eileen says, ageist cards are really discriminatory and we need to kindly educate people about it. Also, the idea of having a president take a cognitive test is another perception uh, that is not favorable to older adults. It was brought up on Jimmy Fallon, which made me cringe. Yeah, yeah, to this, to the great cards. You know, you know, uh, Eileen, thank you for bringing that up. Is is that okay? Yes, as we grow older, there are certain things like dementia and Alzheimer's where the odds um increase that we might have a condition like that but think about what was it today it was announced that one of the strongest most powerful movie stars that's out there bruce willis has dementia and and, and alzheimer's and aphasia is is that none of us have a crystal ball you, you know right. we can walk out of our door today all of us every single one of us and tomorrow we could be in a wheelchair all, all right and to think that uh, that you know these conditions are related to somebody's age is ridiculous. Right. Yeah. No. That's our. Those are great points. I think it's also a reflection of just ageism and pop culture in general, like all the things that you're saying. And I think now we are seeing more pushback when ages comments come to play. I don't know. If some of you feel it, but I think, um, you know, Maria Shriver's doing a lot of great work and her Sunday paper for ageism awareness. There's a lot of celebrities that are speaking out. Oprah has always dealt um, and talked about, um, you know, getting older. And I think part of it is because as baby boomers now, all I think in their 60s and 70s, and if people are living longer, healthier lives, we're just a larger population of people that are old. And I really feel like the ageism, the comments, you get sick of them starting at about 50 and 60. And really by the time you're 60, you're like, I've had enough of, uh, <laughs> of these comments. In fact, on my Instagram post recently, I just talked about Oprah talking with Daniel Pink, who's one of the great like business leaders. He's talking about right brain versus left brain and how everybody needs to be thinking more con you know, contextually and have more right brain type thinking, but he is talking about boomers or people in their 60s. He, I think his stat was like every 18 minutes, 100 people turn 60 in this country. And that there's this, this feeling that, you know, when you, when you turn 60, that the next 25 years actually look pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm from, that's my perspective as well. I'm, I've just turned 60, I'm 61. But she said that, that he said, then you look back 25 years and you think, wow, you know, that really went fast. And so I think we're at this sort of point where we're like, the runway is a little bit shorter for us and we were, we're a force to be reckoned with. And I think we are the generation that's going to speak up and say enough of this talk about getting older. And when you have research like Dr. Becca Levy's research and you have people that are, um, charismatic about speaking up and finding ways to talk about age in clever and inspiring ways, it's time now to have these discussions about ageism. And, and that's really the cool thing about your cards is, is that they're clever and they're positive and it can create a dialogue. Um, yeah. Mar Mary Boosie, this is one that I know that's near to your heart, uh, Jan. She says, 
why are people so ashamed of their age? I'm proud of mine. However, I find it sad. The standard response is you don't look it. It seems to me that this is a reflection on society. And um, yeah, yeah, I know that that is viewed as a compliment and it is a compliment. Nobody is saying like when somebody comes up and says, wow, you're 70, you look good for your age. Like they're, they're not intentionally being disparaging, but a statement right. like that is basically saying like, what are you saying about some, like, is there somebody that you would approach who's been walking this planet for 70 years that you would not say that to? My gut level feeling is if you met somebody, and and, and, and again, I'm speaking in generalities here, yeah. and I'm probably putting my foot in my mouth, but imagine if you bumped into somebody in a wheelchair, with a, using a wheelchair or a walker, who maybe resembled the woman that's on the Hallmark card, okay? Yeah. And she's 70, okay? W would you not say you, so by not giving a compliment like, yeah. wow, you don't look that you're 70, you're you're disparaging that person. Yeah. You, you know? Yeah. Well, Ashton Applewhite has one of the best all-time comebacks to the look, you look great for your age. And she basically flips it on the person and says, well, you look great for your age too. <laughs> and I think that <laughs> I love it, it right back. Yeah. And the other thing about that is that it's implied that it's, it's um it's better to look younger <laughs> and we have to just accept it and that we all look the same right that every 60 or 70 year old that there's this mental image that's been created by the media on what a 60 or 70 year old should look like so and i think we're comparing against that mental image which is the one in the media which is the the wrinkly hands and the rocking chair on the front porch and the whatever it, anyway there's just so much wrong with the you look great for your age um compliment. I do have a, a sticker that throws it back and says, well, you look great for your age too. So <laughs> yeah, I think you just have to sort of brush off those um, comments or use it as the opportunity to educate somebody about ageism. Oh, check this out. This is a great one. Glenna says, I'm told that in China, you don't get a real birthday celebration until you turn 80 years old. People come from all around for the party. When you're younger, all you get is a bowl of noodles for good luck. Apparently, it's considered to be no great accomplishment to be six years old. Um, yeah. You know, that, I mean, that's that's a type of, and and I think we all know that that in Asian cultures, it seems that elders are more revered. Mm -hmm. But you can see where that's the opposite of these age disparaging cards, and it's a cultural yeah. norm, right? And part of it is that. Um, it sells product, right? So if you tell people that wrinkles are bad and you, you know, youthful appearance is, is it, then, I mean, the anti-aging industry is another huge astronomical industry in our country. And it's, it's because the narrative around, you know, and even the, you know, mental decline and the physical decline, it, all the whole narrative around getting old means that we can sell you products and potions and solutions to this problem that's been manufactured. Um, I also, um, this is kind of interesting. When I was getting into um, ageist greeting cards, I started to think, where did this come from? And I, I, this conversation happened on LinkedIn as well, Steve. And I mentioned, I traced it back to Maxine, who this is a pretty fascinating story. So back in the 80s, in the mid 80s, about 1986 to be exact. And I remember this because I was the age of the person who created Maxine for Hallmark. So Hallmark at the time had, you know, when you care enough to send the very best was their slogan. And they created this, um, shoebox greetings wing of their company and in shoebox greeting this gentleman created this caricature of Maxine who had this sarcastic quip in this like little you know that you guys all remember Ma Maxine well she was created in 1986 and she was wildly popular but I thought a lot about my mother at that age because I was the age of the creator in my 20s and my mother was in her probably 40s or 50s. And she was the one who resonated with this snarky, crabby, you know, quip, you know, sarcastic quips about life, including getting older. Well, that was a time when 
women back then were much different than um, the women of today, the 60 year old of today, and didn't have as much of a voice. And I think it was part of that self deprecating humor and that we're a sisterhood here and when we don't have a voice, so we're gonna let this Hallmark character, you know, be our voice. So what happened is it was wildly popular and a lot of it spun off, you know, copycats that are still around today. So, and if you, if you just stop and think about that was 30, how many years ago, 35 years ago, a long time ago. And it's like, it's time to retire Maxine. It's time to put, and she, they are still creating, well, they're, the, the writer isn't creating anything new, but they still sell Maxine cards on the Hallmark website. So anyway, I think oh, it's a cultural. I, I, I think, you know, it's uh, Maxine made that company billions of dollars, but mm -hmm. it, and, uh, it, and again, like none of this stuff happens by accident, folks, but it's, but like you said, and, and on the LinkedIn post, it's sort of like unanimously, everybody's sort of like, you know, I mean, Hallmark could get really creative in a way to retire Maxine in a similar way that some of the, you know, sports teams are retiring, you know, yeah. American Indians and, and, yeah. And, it, and and it and that would probably be good for business, but it, yeah. but from a cultural perspective, but uh, but I don't want them to do that until your company is um, <laughs> you know, at the billion dollar level, Jen. Well, I um, want to tell you they're trying. Um, just real quickly, they're trying, but there's they still have those caricatures. I don't know if you guys have seen them, but they'll have this this woman with you know this curly hair and these funky glasses and and the man, and they're on this roller coaster and they have their hands up and they're saying isn't this the best of our life you know and it's like stop with the caricatures you know you wouldn't draw a caricature of a african-american person a, per a person of color of a you know anyway they're well, getting one there, of the but... things i like about your cards is that there's no characters is is yeah. that it's clever well-designed type typography and and just like reading a book i mean we all enjoy reading books and we don't need to see pictures it's theater of the mind, and um, yeah, but sure. not to say that you're not going to use characters down the road. But uh, but mm -hmm. you know this is interesting, and 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 this could be an interesting study for you in changing the narrative to do. Mm -hmm. Karen asks, I wonder how old most of the people are who create greeting cards, and oh. um, you know how you see these workplace surveys all the time. You know how much people make at a certain age or whatever or a certain level. Um, I bet you there is something out there, and if not, it'd be interesting to look at the demographics of greeting card writers, because yeah. I bet you you could make a play on, well, of course they are having a hard time uh, writing uh, yeah. stuff with from an empathetic eye, and, and, and also, you could also do the same in terms of diversity, you know? Um, the diversity of those writers, uh, you know, yeah. so. And it is women, it's mostly women in their 30s and 40s from my informal observation being an insider in the industry now. I don't really have insight on the large corporations and their team of writers, but a lot of marketing and advertising people are are young, you know, men and women in their 30s and 40s that are are creating these cards, maybe maybe 20s as well. But yeah, that's but I think again, there a lot of them are socially conscious and socially aware and they're not, you know, and so when you bring up um, ageism as another way of othering another young versus old, old versus young, um, it's it's a it's a quick uh, study to say this is not okay, <laughs> you know. It, this is just not on people's radar, and we don't yeah. r recognize when a lot of us don't recognize when we're making age statements. Uh, the um, yeah. Dixie has a great thing, and and Dixie, I, I, I'm in this ballpark with you. She says recommend purchasing cardstock envelopes, a list of favorite quotes or photos, and send your own handmade cards. I've not purchased a card in years. I um, in general. I have a hard time purchasing cards and getting all excited about what's inside them. Uh, I, I I like to try to be creative when I can, but I will say that like, um, Jan, you've inspired me to buy cards again. Uh, and <laughs> like I, 
like I said, I went on your website this morning and, and purchased a few. Um, let's see. Uh, I do have a comment on that, though. One of the things you can do, and also um, you have to be careful when you're using quotes. Is that, well, if you're doing it for personal reasons, you're not. But you don't have to be. But there's a public domain aspect that you have to kind of worry about when you're using quotes on cards. But what you can do is find just a generic birthday card, a generic birthday greeting, and on the inside, just write some, you know, age positive statements, just saying, you know, um, congratulations on another year. I look forward to, you know, your accomplishments in this coming year. And I think if you, if you can just come up with a generic greeting, but people have to stop buying those like ages cards. And then I think they'll start yeah. to go away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you're making your own, you're, at least you're not feeding the ages card industry. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, and we were talking about, uh, Glenna says, uh, perhaps that the industry should know that if people over 50 were an economy, it would be the third largest economy yeah. in the world behind the economy of US and China. They are an economic force. Why would they be so negative? I, I feel like we're slowly getting there, but yeah. um, it's amazing how slow these movement takes. But a, yeah. a lot's been written about longevity economy, but again, yeah. I think I, I think ageist viewpoints are part of the problem. And we, we you, you all hear yeah. this you know, in hiring managers who are younger and, you know, their age bias that they haven't been through some kind of training can, can be poisonous to an organization. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Janine Vandenberg from Changing the Narrative says it really well too. It's like, we need all of it. We need workplace age discrimination awareness, you know, with employers, we need ages of healthcare awareness, we need and, and, and the greeting card industry to become aware, we need marketing and advertising and visual ageism, we need awareness everywhere. So there's, it's not just, uh, this is not siloed, this is just and, 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 you'll see examples everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and, and one of the things that I, I find, and again, I, I've made my living in this age segregated senior living space. But what I remind people about is that every week, uh, I mean, I talk to at least two or three people that, that utter the phrase, I'm not ready for that yet. Okay. And, and that could be a home care agency. It could be moving to a senior living community. It could be anything that's age segregated or has a label of aging on it. And I often remind people, I said, look, it's because what we're offering them is age segregated. People live in neighborhoods right now where black, white, divorced, young, old live amongst themselves. So even if your service is appealing, and, and this is also, wrapped up in age, ageism and age bias, you, you know, and, um, and it's very complicated. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, Ken Silverstein uh, says, I went to college with Bruce Willis. So it really makes me sad to hear what's happening to him. Yeah, um, sure. The, um, uh, let's see, Jenna says, and here's a precedent. Hallmark has a series called Mahogany that is a beautifully designed and to respect African Americans, years ago the cards features Maya An Angelo insp with inspiring quotes. How about asking them to create a respectful line for birthdays and retirement? And uh, yeah, sure. and and I think that exactly. And and I I I doubt that they create they they created that the that line of cards because of cultural pressure. I, mm -hmm. I mean and. And that's not a bad thing, okay? It could have been one of their card designers is like, hey, wait a minute, guys, 80% of our cards are showing Ken and Barbie. Uh, you know, we got to change this. And they and they changed that. Yeah. And they can, they can change this too. Yeah, and one of the things for me personally is um, as much as I want my own company to succeed, I want to people to copy what I'm doing. I want people to be inspired by seeing that these cards sell and make their own version of the sentiments that I'm sharing. And I want the writers in these 
um, larger greeting card companies to say, oh, what's going on over here? Look at this. These things are getting attention and buzz and selling, and maybe we should think about creating some age positivity. So it's it's a we're at the start of this movement in the greeting card um, industry, and we're start at the start of the larger conversation about ageism, and it's a really exciting place to be. So and um, and Karen has a, has an interesting statement. I love I love it when these thought-provoking statements, she says, I think there's a difference between how we look and how our grandparents looked back in the day, which is where you get the phrase, you look great for your age, where, where that might come from. I, yeah. There's no telling where that, that came from. And, um, but I think the, uh, I think that it, it was probably more acceptable to, to speak to somebody in that way, because we were talking about women and we were talking about race and we were talking about a lot back in the day, but now we've progressed, you know. Um, and then Eileen says, I love the idea of levels of aging instead of focus on the numbers of years lived. Each level you gain experience, wisdom, and life lessons. I'm at my in my sixth level and going for levels of experience, wisdom, and living life to the fullest. I, I love that too, Eileen. And that, and that sort of stems from, in a weird way, I never thought of it this way, but my comment about graduation. You, you know, we, we graduate, we celebrate graduation from schools and colleges and getting our first job. And, and you know, another graduation is becoming a parent, you know. And, and, and looking at these positive elements and, and weaving that in. And, and I, you know, I lean something that the youngsters might, uh, and I shouldn't even say something like that, something that uh, people might relate to are the levels of a video game. Is, is mm -hmm. that, you know, I, that's, I like your, your comment about levels, but you see how I caught myself there? Like when I said youngsters, I'm actually, that's an age of statement. And, and listen, I, I made a mistake, okay? But I caught myself yeah. and, and everybody in the audience heard me catch myself and say, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. And that's the types of things that we need to do when we make age of statements. Yeah, I think there's this um, internalized ageism or just this kind of confirmation bias or um, implicit bias around ageism because we're, it's so ingrained. I catch myself all the time too, Steve. Um, and I catch myself saying ages things or thinking things, but I, the, the difference is that I catch myself, you know, and that I, I think about it and then I think about ways to, to do better or say it differently the next time around. So I wanna bring up just one more quick point about, um, I wanna do a shout out for stickers. I have a lot of stickers as well. So I have this one here that says, love your future self. And I have this one in my water bottle that says, we all age differently. And I wanna encourage people um, to, if you're not a sticker person, you're probably a water bottle person, or you probably have a phone, or you probably have a laptop. And I think that this is a way that we, I call them little mini billboards. And this is a way that you can get age positive phrases just out there in the world. And I think um, I'd like to encourage you to become a sticker person. <laughs> I don't want to produce a lot of like copy mugs and t-shirts and I don't want to produce a bunch of stuff that people can, you know, just be accumulating. But I, I do love the idea of a sticker and putting it on something that you see yourself every day or that other people see that can remind you a um, little age positive uh, vibes out there in the world. Yeah, one of the, one of the first, age positive stickers that that I received was this one from my yeah. friend Charles D. Vermillion. And I have one of these on the back of my car. I did order a bunch of your stickers, so I'm gonna have those too. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna pick a few of those. But um, I, the conversations that I have in uh, the parking lot when I'm going to my car are just wonderful with yeah. this sticker. Exactly. And um, love it. The, um, uh, let's see, uh, and I, I dropped the link to the stickers in there. Um, and, uh, uh, oh, Meg says, I think senior living communities should sell your cards. And yeah, uh, that's something that I think we can help Jan with. It's when I met Jan, that was one of my first things is like, 
she can create, she can go around, uh, you know, the big box, you know, drugstores and stuff and create her own distribute. There could be this anti-aging yeah. distribution channel in the gift shops of all the senior living communities, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, and um, let's see, uh, somebody says, the ad industry makes money by making youth the best part of life indirectly and occasionally and directly downgrading older adults. And, um, and I, one thing that I like to remind people of is, you know, a lot of times when we're celebrating, I, I want you all to think about this and I'm probably gonna stick my foot in my mouth, but when I'm on social media and when I'm looking at, you know, mass media and advertising, a lot of times the way we celebrate uh, age positive this uh, is through feats of physical activity, jumping out of an airplane at a certain age, running a marathon at a certain age. And, and when I see those things, while I want to celebrate them, it's also a very, very, very slippery slope, okay? Because we all know people that have lived a healthy life. And like I said, walked out the door and something happened. It, nobody can control what's going on in our bodies. And so don't get too wrapped up in celebrating that physical thing. I don't care how many vitamins you, you take every morning. That's no guarantee that you're not going to have a major health episode that changes your trajectory in the future. And we need to celebrate everybody, you, you know, and, 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 and for those of us in this profession, we need to be guides to help people through who might be going through that reinvention phase of their life because of the change. Um, and don't, don't blame that on growing older. Okay. Yeah. Again, Bruce Willis has got Alzheimer's. I think he's in his sixties. Okay. Um, has nothing to do with age, right. you know? Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm babbling. Um, <laughs> um, holy cow, it's been an hour. I knew this was going to happen. Uh, <laughs> let me just glance at these, um, at these comments here. It, it, just so many positive responses. And, um, uh, I, I want to thank everybody, uh, for, for jumping in on this discussion. And this is, to me, this is just a reminder we got to do a, a monthly ageism talk yeah. and you, you know there's a bunch of topics we talk about here where it's almost like i just need to create an open forum where we can talk about this stuff yeah but jan sure. you, you are wonderful i mm -hmm. i love everything you're doing i i i'm so excited and you're really making a, a tremendous impact on the world um oh holy cow um i totally missed uh a few questions that are here. Let's see. Um, have any of you seen, have you seen any other cards that are also the stories on the internet that talk about recipes and food meals and dishes that baby boomers, oh, oh that grandparents cook for different generations. Some of the examples come to mind. Uh, sorry for this question. Hope that you will share. Okay. I'm sorry. The, that's a great question. It's it's long, and I missed it. Um, uh, but we're going to do another ageism discussion. Uh, so, um, uh, Jan, any closing statements? I'll make sure to share all your info. No, I just appreciate you, Stephen. You're bringing awareness to this um, topic, and it's something that we all should be talking about. And I just want to encourage you to. The next time you or your loved one is celebrating a birthday, just take a minute to ask somebody, how are they feeling about getting older? And then remind them that their mindset about getting older has a big impact on longevity and how you grow old. So thanks again for, this has been a great conversation. I really appreciate I, it. I love it. And I just, we do this on LinkedIn Live and I, I just want to give a shout out to the people that are hanging on there. I, I missed some of the comments there as well, but this is just indicative of the fact that it's a great discussion and, yeah. and you're a real inspiration. So we're going to do this again. I'm going to look on the calendar, figure out what we can do next month on this topic. But um, okay. thanks a lot. And thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. All right. Thank you.